Hi, I'm Jenny, and today I'll be talking about three chronographs, more specifically watches from Zenith, Rolex, and Breitling, and we're going to see which of these three watches, starting from 7,900 up to 12,250 euro, is the best choice, and especially for whom it is the best choice. So I'm going to start out by showing you the three watches, let you in on the most important characteristics like proportions, how it wears, finishing, and movement, so we can compare them all at the end and find out which watch type you are and which of these three is best suited for you so let's get started this Rolex Daytona in this Panda Dar variation is of right now the most sought after Rolex model it measures a 40 millimeter in diameter but looks and also wears actually a bit smaller than that which is mainly because of the following three things first you have the black ceramic bezel that visually shrinks the watch face a little bit secondly the Daytona is a rather slim watch with a height of only 12.8 millimeters which is actually pretty flat for a chronograph like this and lastly the Daytona has a lug to lug of 47 millimeter which is only two millimeters bigger than my candy pink by the way adding to the small-ish look is also the elegant the curved shape of the case and the comfy oyster bracelet so the measurements make this one a great option for smaller wrists too like mine or my husband's as you can see here which is also why people with bigger wrists tend to find the Daytona a bit too small sometimes so it definitely gets my IBWC stamp of approval here I would say that ideally your wrists would be between 160 to 180 millimeter for the Daytona but that's just a personal preference right now I would say that many buy a Daytona because of its instantly recognizable look that lots of people now associate with a certain prestige but also its racing sport background the bezel is made from scratch resistant and non-fading ceramic with a platinized tachymeter scale the case is largely polished with finely curved lugs that sit nicely on the wrist what's also polished are the bracelets middle links that are made from 904l steel like the rest of the watch the clasp not only has one of these safety latches that keeps you from accidentally opening up your bracelet but also a five millimeter easily adjustment which lets you you know adjust the bracelet without using any tools when it comes to finishing I have to say that the Daytona really delivers as you can see how great it looks no matter how close you get to the dial except for the bright red Daytona lettering the color scheme of the Daytona remains black and white which is also why it's called the panda dial ticking inside is Rolex's in-house caliber 4130 with a power reserve of 70 hours a chronograph function as well as a hacking second to easily set the time what's missing here though is a date complication so you have to check your old smartphone to check out what day it is the robust movement and case also offer a water resistance of 100 meter so i would say that this one is an ideal companion for every day given the retail price of 12,250 euro this one is not only the most expensive watch in today's video but also the one that is the hardest to get you'd either have to pay at least double on the market or you have to have a really good relationship with your ad but before we continue with watch number two on this list, I want to let you know that today on March 21st at 6 p.m. Central European time, that is GMT plus one hour, my watch rolls have launched. Get your watches the watch rolls they truly deserve. I got plenty of different colors and designs available in sizes for one up to four watches. So go check out JennyL.shop right after this video to get your handmade watch roll. All the links as always are in the description box below. I mean, truth be told, I'm sure we can all see why this Chronomaster has been so hotly debated since its release a couple of weeks ago. At first glance, it looks a lot like the watch we just talked about, but when we take a closer look, we can see that they only have very little in common, actually. It's starting with the case proportions in which the Zenith already looks chunkier compared to the Daytona, even though it's only a tiny bit bigger, with a diameter of 41 millimeters instead of the 40 and a lug to lug of 47 instead of 46 millimeter, which lets you know that this is is very much a look instead of actual size problem or issue the main cause for that chunkier look is definitely the case thickness with its 15 millimeter it makes this one stick up quite a bit on the wrist especially for smaller or thinner wrists but the cool thing is though with this combo of a slightly increased height but a rather tame lug to lug and a diameter you get a watch that still works on a lot of different wrists without looking too disproportionate so zenith really worked their magic on this one with this one you also get a 
black ceramic bezel, though you can see by the inscription that we have got something different going on compared to your regular chrono. Another similarity to the other popular chrono is not only the bezel, but also the bracelet with the polished metal links, though Zenith added a nice slanted edge to the links, which gives it a nice little touch, I think. The clasp itself also has a safety latch added to it with the option to micro adjust, even though you would have to get a tool to do that. The dial with its three different colored sub dials makes this one look much more, I would say, exciting than most chronographs, but I like that the pastel colors do not make it look like too crazy, but very chic and elegant. And you can tell that the dial is amazingly well finished, which you can see when we take an even closer look. Our markers, hands, sub dials, everything looks pretty perfect. But I would say that the most significant characteristic of the Chronomaster Sport is its caliber, the latest El Primero 3600. The ancestral El Primero has been updated and improved and was even built into the Rolex Daytona's up until the 2000s. But there are some important differences. The most important one is that the Zenith movement beats with a frequency of 10 instead of 8 ticks per second, which means that you can measure the time up until the 10th of a second, which is also why you have this special kind of scale on the bezel. So when you start the chronograph, the chrono hand swishes around the entire dial once every 10 seconds instead of the, you know, regular 60. Another bonus is the date between four and five, and also the fact that this Zenith still offers a power reserve of 60 hours, which is always nice to have. But the highlight remains the view that you get when looking at the movement itself. I mean, look at that. The edges are beautifully finished. You get the skeletonized rotor, the blued parts, and all that other colors. It is simply really beautiful. And then there's also the 100 meter water resistance on top of it. The entire package makes for a solid everyday watch and the Chronomaster Sport retails for 9,700 euro. The next one on this list is also a rather new release, more specifically from last year, the revival of the original Breitling Chronomat from 1942. From the three watches of today, the Breitling is by far the biggest and chunkiest of the three, though the diameter measures only 42 millimeter. It's the rest of the case that makes this one look huge on smaller wrists, as you can see. With a lug to lug of 50 millimeter and a height of 15 millimeters, this one really sits quite large on your wrist, so it really does not get the IBWC stamp of approval from me. But still, I have to say that thanks to the case and bracelet design, which goes straight down from the case, it's still wearable for smaller wrists, as you can see. It also has a quite comfortable bracelet as smaller links are more flexible, plus they also feel super nice against your skin too. Breitling equipped this chrono with a twistable bezel, so for that one, you have the tachymeter scale on the inside around the dial. The entire case is intricately finished, so you get lots of different surfaces, as well as some very nice design details around the chrono pushes, and a very cool onion-like crown, so that's very on-brand for Breitling. The love for smaller details like that continues onto the bracelet, and I really like how it not only like looks really great, but more importantly, feels very smooth too. It all ends in my favorite type of clasp, a hidden one, which unfortunately has no form of quick adjustment, but you still get a nice Breitling engraving in it. I know that I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but it's not my fault that Breitling also did a great job on the dial too. The sunrise looks really great. The edges are super sharp. It works really well color-wise as well, and the corner hands with the red coating gives a nice contrast to the dark dial. I suppose that for watch lovers, the nicest detail here is still the built-in movement, as this one is Breitling's own B01 with a power reserve of 70 hours, which has been introduced in 2009 and built into the Navi timer since then. It adds a handy date at six o'clock, which I'm sure many are excited about as well. And it would have been a damn shame if Breitling hid it away. So they let you admire their work through the exhibition case back. With a retail price of 7,900, this one is not only the most affordable watch of today, but with a water resistance of 200 meter, the watch with the best specs in that regard too. So which one of these three is the best one. Well, if there is one thing I know for sure is that there is no best one watch for everyone. Each of these could be the best for a specific type of watch owner or watch collector. So let's see who those types could be. So the Rolex Daytona is first and foremost a Rolex. Lots of people want that, a Rolex. Many appreciate the perceived scarcity of a Daytona. It's currently sitting at the peak of the unavailable Rolex mountain for which you would have to pay more than double to be able to buy it instantly on the 
the secondary market. Additionally, you get what is expected from Rolex, so a great level of details, excellent finishing, and an overall solid watch that looks really great on smaller to average size wrists. The Zenith is considered to be the trailblazer, especially for the Daytona, so it seems only fair that the Chronomaster is also able to manufacture a white dial chrono with a black ceramic bezel and a three-link bracelet with a polished middle link. Besides that, I would say that the Chronomaster is a great choice for those who appreciate a very special movement with a rich history, kind of like a chronograph for connoisseurs. <laughs> to me, it's up there with the Daytona in terms of quality, except for, and I know I'm going to be probably crucified in the comments for saying this, the clasp, which really isn't as well made as the rest of the watch, unfortunately. Thanks to its still considerably small lug-to-lug -lug button increased height, the Chronomaster is a great chrono for most wrists who can handle the added thickness. And then there is the Breitling that really brings it with its price and value proposition compared to the other two. You get everything you would expect from a luxury chrono. You get an in-house movement, an incredible level of details, and a very nicely finished case and bracelet. It sits comfortably on your wrist and it also sports a very unique look too. It's definitely something for those who prefer, I'd say, their chronos to be functional looking with a touch of vintage. You'd only have to keep in mind that this one really isn't ideal for smaller wrists, I would say. So those were three different but panda-like chronographs from three different brands. Which one did you like best and what's your main must-have in a chronograph? As always, let me know in the comments down below what you think and make sure to visit jennyl.shop to check out the watch rolls that dropped today so your watches get the storage they deserve. And that was it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye.